Lavile bi situacije, da tukaj amasad da se da pirvel mus, ali možda neči imete mus. E kar je odazni, to ne bismo še tukajšeli, da do vladija ne še še kule bi da i gio še nekaj smo jaz zelo dirac. Mogu in grebo da maši tukaj, kaj da skoraj bi bilo, ko no da je vzdo boli no for cause, da bi smisalis zapustil. Da gori tukaj, da v akac, kar kaj vcilat, čamo kaj lepe boli, ali iz Pirove bi, to sa še gizelija ta dovadija nekaj še guleba, ne bi ja, da tako gori malo s informacija, cilo obseh biznes, iz kojega tamo i dahal še ta vazeva rov, ta še gulimo se cilija nekaj še guleba bi, romeli s tukaj orđer za dizet kak zelda, še ne gori rada i cela, uva to kaj še guleba. Tuk sad, nahod tako gori, tako gori, reakcije moga da mas, sakam da dolga on sveta. Tuk sad tukaj ga ovi tvoj sem premijer, mi smo izgledan sve dozi, viša se jero, jaz čuj ljuba ih nas, A tukaj kaj tali? Ta je jaz bolj obuhli, romelic sa romelice tukaj začal video, da sa obarek vese, ki jih ne ba, am še gledi otvoreno, še zgodo, še ni tam sak ne beli, in izgan, še ta sak ne boli, izgaro, še kam šel video, ki je dobi še tukaj, še nekaj sklagan, ali mu šel, sam hril. Samic lis vadas izlel, da izlel ar se boli regulacije bi, tukaj sa, Ta nastavare meti sva vade bude, ali ta sakra bude sfregano, uzrunjeno po samišnjo in vuklis efekturova, a na perijarijo. Tudi sa akac, kar tu ima sa sama šljubeba, ga bi vrcila, tudi se in ga da je snab biđi, da bodo še tvoj še bere vrtici praktika še, tukaj kompensacija sa ruhti, bi jam še zgodi s kamo, tudi mi skoda še tvoj še, kar tu sa sama šljubeba, v kaj tudi den, ima se je drug strajk, da vam sa no, a ba ti lepe napišno, napišno še zgodi. Tudi sa tukaj je pa vrapravili, Pa se je ca nas govorilo, da mašin, da so kaj bi jo da, da se je zgodil več zvitat, da je spravljeno da je hnevo da banke v zadnjo revoluciji kaj izlo, da so zvitat banke tam, da ga živi tali. A je sad je ahali še mot hava zeba, rogotske da še izgodba je ustrende, da na sebe avci lepe jero, kaj ga da hkelih nas, a nas ga uleba. Tudi sa ak problem boli vsakaj, kaj sa je čunem hedel, da ga sa je sa samo tudi, da je v isti, da bi se pridam del rušel, da je v debali isto, da je v isti smeba, se bilo je sam ušel s prosmi in revolicijo do nekvalifikacije. Ne bi smešen tako še, a jaz si sami talijen mogli je ta schema dolati iz tu, da tukaj ne bi igre gneva. Talijen mogli je še v hebi me, jaz sem sakrat to vsakonicu samo razbiljko v nas. Mi to ro, mi da več sad ro, da ga nahod da se več čujem skojela v biti tudi. Ima iz tu ro boli kontekst in tako treba, a pa tukaj ne bevs da raji kneba sa sama rebevi s reakcijo. Rogorska je sami čujni konstitucija, romen tamo so šoma in tavi supalija, da ga se bo trebalo podrebo v mene z neodhe, punkt, šo mi smo pitati, šo mi tukaj bi zdati šla, da ga bolj pirno bi, ga nisem zgodil vse, ga to so ga bolj kamer. A tu, do še hedo, da pat smo prihlapili plain reading in ga nekaj tam nišno bi vuklis, talijec ne je ipa ova mulši, iz vade guleba, prom ta uševelija, kot mize z izgareše, da bodo govorili mize z izgareše, tam sak ne bi snebar tvit, tam sak ne bi snebar tvit, tam sak ne bi snebar tvit, še bi ti še bolj bi še cveta. Da, vsaka to vsako nisem vse samo dospati, da sad ki smo vedeli, da bi ta se delovalo. In si njam v skandal, da je dogod shod, še bi ti tavi suhle bi suhle vas, ampak bi imel so, sad da zgledam, da je ki mušalo, da Adam in Arka je zulos, da vas je Samo šel še sude. Ta Arab je takrat na kaj na muh sobrc, kar bo vcilat šel biti piro bebis, kar bo li minimalno izgvaris še mu še vrde normac. Tukca, mogvijane bi tukve, boljo da boljo tve vše hedda, tukaj cvaleva doba slogori, rogori ali, amkriv gradacija anonelnila, kar da dijan Arab marto šo mi s tavi suhleb zuzmjel, ko vmukli na gada, da je 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 vmukli na gada, sa sama kljubo, ko mi da li vsakaj to zuzne, sa sama kljubo, roca, Anna Kaldam, 
Sakara or Rosan, the human, the Iruel de Wolves, sorry, Iruel Sauvari, the Itzko, Sakato, Sakotu, Sasamatros, Sakatos Constitusi Sada, Shasanta, Sakato, Sakato, Sasamatos, Motsam, the Gamma Bell, the Abeli Levit, and the Gundi, Uzanes, Sasamatlum, Sakato, Sasamatos, Ufro Sakato, Sasamatlo, Ragadas, we are. I got booked that he said he does not have a moment to talk about the same thing. I got a moment and I get that's maybe on some power. He does not have a test. I think it's a little bit of a sign. He was that beauty taro, Uzamet, Mukli, Harunda Ganimatos, Isse, Robert Scott, Shomiti, Tavisuklevis, Uzuna, Mukli, Aramet, S. Mukli, and S. Gabo, minimum of standard peps, Shomis Pirot and Akash, the Congregate. شون می توانید تو بیست تا شون بیس تا سامش آوست چنین چون بیس چنین چون بیس کوت خیر. یه سالی از می دونم می می توانم اوکرایت تا که کیو بیست گذاشتم سمت چپ شون بیلیت سعی تو سازمان کرده بیست وقتی که از ایساو ایساو بیلیت زالیان اوکرایت تا شنبه که چون کاری که جو ماستر سیمان اوکرایت آمریکول کامو تیم از جاوی زیاد است. خون تو بیانی کی خواهی کنی باد دنیس من دوست Հայցի � Սամուսամատքությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությությ
Um, and so I thought that was a, a nice way to bring that in. in. Back in the United States, I would be an American football reference, but I knew here that would mean nothing, so I went to soccer. Plus, my nine-year-old, my eight-year-old son is playing soccer now, so we have. And my, and my wife is the coach of the team, and so we have soccer on our mind on, on, on our team. I'm not the, the, the coach because I'm a terrible soccer player. Um, so we have two general categories, at least in the United States, of uh, uh, infractions, right? Extremely serious offenses. Fighting being one of them at work, right? That's a classic one um, that do not warrant any sort of uh, warning that would fall under 37G, right? I think that's the right one. That would say you could be discharged without warning, summary uh, discharge, uh, striking a, a supervisor or hitting a supervisor, that'll get you there. Uh, stealing from the employer, that'll get you there. Um, if you persistently refuse to obey reasonable um, requests or orders at work, that'll get you there too, it'll get you summary discharge. Uh, less serious offenses, right, may never justify discharge, even if they occur over a long period of time and multiple times. Um, only sort of discipline, right, it'll justify discipline, something less than termination, um, a suspension, a written warning, an oral warning, uh, something less, and I'm, I'm going to get to the reason why in a minute. Uh, but things like being tardy for work, being absent, carelessness at work, trying to make mistakes, you're not a very good employee. Uh, at least under a just cause regime, that's something, being not good at your job is not usually something that will allow the employer just to fire you on, on, on day one for one act of not being good at your job, which is very, very different from employment at will. Right? Because under employment at will system, you make one mistake and you can be out the door. Um, so there's much more area for our, at least the employee to improve uh, the conduct. Um, there, are, uh, well, I we'll get to that. So a couple of things, a couple of broad categories I think that might be helpful, right? At least under American law, of things that you can do that arbitrators largely agree and courts largely agree will get you to that immediate termination, right? Sleeping at work, willfully sleeping at work. Right? There's a difference. There, there, you would think, well, you can sleep at work, you can get fired. There are two different kinds of sleeping at work. There's the sleeping at work, like right now, I'm sitting here, and I just, because I'm jet lagged, I just happen to fall asleep, and I can no longer talk to anybody. That's not willful, because I'm doing it in front of everyone in the room, right? I'm not hiding it in any way. If I do this, if I go under my desk and build a bed and sort of hide myself and shut the lights off so no one can see what I'm doing, if there's some deception in the sleeping at work, then that is something that's going to warrant some addition. It's almost like stealing from the employer, right? It's so willful, you're stealing time, you're getting paid for time, you should be productive, and instead you're under your desk making an average, I would like very much to do right now, because I don't know what time of the day it is anymore. Anyway. Um, so in this one case, and in the case citations are in the notes that if you have in your written materials, if you want to look up these cases and actually review them, I have the case citations in the notes. Uh, Ballast Park, two employees treated very differently by the arbitrator, employee A, hid with the lights off in a supervisor's office and was a rather short-term employee who was only worked there for about a year, fired. He was sleeping for about 59 minutes a shift over a period of a couple of weeks. But another employee in the same case at the same employer conducted in some, did some of the same behavior but slightly different. He was in the supervisor's office, there was some sleeping going on, it wasn't as much time as employee A, but this employee was actually going through his supervisor's desk and going through materials and looking at his personal effects and going through file cabinets, things that would be fairly serious infractions of uh, you know, work rules, had worked for the employer for about 10 years, and the arbitrator said, not willful, and because of the longer term employee, no just cause to terminate employee B, but there is just cause to terminate employee A. So, even, if we, even when we have categories like this, where we say sleeping on the job will get you fired, there are still distinctions that are being made when we're applying just cause principles as to what type of employee is it, are there mitigating circumstances, things that would make us excuse the conduct of the employee versus an employee who has no excuse. Um, one of the big ones that an arbitrators, it's American arbitrators, always see, will say is longer term employees get more bites at the apple than a short term employee. It's very difficult for an employer to terminate someone who's worked for an employer under just cause for 10 or 15 years to fire that person in at least one instance versus someone who just started six months ago. And just, they're very different uh, cases. 
bringing a weapon to work, that, 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 that's a sort of a, we, we call these things cardinal sins in the United States in, uh, in employment law. It's the things that get you fired right away, even under a union contract. Uh, here, at least in the San Diego trolley case, uh, an employee uh, brought a loaded gun and had it in his locker, and then, then proceeded to threaten some employees that he was going to get them. Um, and, and there the, the arbitrator said, yes, of course, there's, there's just cause to terminate that employee because the employer has a duty to protect the employees and to provide a safe uh, workplace, and, and that seems to be consistent with that. You'll get, you're going to find, I think, the theme that runs through these things are, is there some real objective reason related to the employer's duties and obligations to the business or to employee safety and health and well-being to justify the discharge? I think that's the thread that runs through these at least categories. Fighting at work, inherently improper. Um, CJC Inc., again, it's in your notes. Um, although the employee here was, it was, she was discharged, but she was brought back to work. It was a failure proof case. The supervisor came across an employee, one employee with her hands around the neck of another one. That's what the supervisor saw, this. She got fired for fighting at work. The arbitrator said, well, you know, you didn't really know what was going on. Maybe she was provoked. Maybe she was acting in self-defense. Maybe the other employee started the fight. And you didn't investigate. All you did was see with your eyes that one little snapshot of what was happening there, this. Bring her back to work. Un it was, that, 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 that termination was not for, for just cause, and that employee was ordered back to work under the union contract. So again, another example. Even in these categories of where we have a just cause, actually you can fire someone for fighting at work, which seems perfectly logical, there are exceptions to that, and still the employer is held to these due process issues of doing a proper and full investigation, and then justifying with sufficient proof that the actual infraction occurred. Using or selling drugs, um, that'll get you fired right away. At work, though, at work, there's two distinctions there. Uh, drug use at home or alcohol use at home, so long as you do not come into work, Drunk, or we say in the United States, high on drugs, right? With a certain level of, of let's say, metabolites in your bloodstream, right? Evidence of that to make you impaired. If you're at home doing that, and there's at least some evidence that you're a drug user, but you're not impaired at work, that under a just cause regime, uh, unless you're in a particularly sensitive uh, in, 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 in job, is not going to justify termination. But actually using it at work will, or selling it at work will, in the Burger Iron case in your notes is an example of that. And there the employee said, well, you know what? The employer has a system, this drug treatment plan. So send us to that, right? Order us to go to drug treatment. And the doctor said, no, 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 no. No suspensions, no treatment. You were selling it at work. You were using it at work. There is a profit motive there that's just inconsistent with working at the same time. And so we're going to justify your discharge. Um, under employment at will, it wouldn't even be a question, right? But under just cause, that was actually a real argument. And it was a bit of a close call for the arbitrator. I think another arbitrator might have found differently. So, well, you have the system, so it seems very much to make you use it. Uh, serious negligence at work, one time, can warrant discharge under a just cause regime. Um, it has to be significant threat of loss or public or, or employee safety, right? If I just make a mistake, um, like for instance, uh, there was at least one employee in your notes, she um, didn't follow procedures and she lost, uh, I think, $7,000 of the employee's money, uh, of the employer's money, right? Just disappeared, couldn't find it anymore. She was supposed to put it in the safe and keep records. She didn't do all that. Um, discharge, she was fired and, and the arbitrator said, no, bring her back. She just made a mistake. It's just negligence. She wasn't willfully, she didn't willfully violate policy. She just forgot, she made a mistake. We're not going to say you can just you can discharge someone for that under just cause. Instead, what you can do is discipline, right? Correct the action, correct the misconduct, make her a better employee so she doesn't do it again. That's the concept of it. Um, general workplace accidents again may or may not justify depending on how serious it is. There's at least one case in your notes of the of a forklift driver who failed to honk his horn. I'm not sure if that's going to happen here in Georgia because everyone honks their horn here in Georgia, but I mean, he didn't have this horn coming around a corner and hit an employee and dragged the employee about 15 feet through the warehouse, um, was fired, but was brought back to work. There was no just cause for termination because it was just a mistake. He didn't willfully violate the policy. 
But then you have other examples of serious accidents that could or did occur from his conduct that did justify it, right? Uh, an electrical worker or a chemical uh, worker at a plant where he mixed the wrong chemicals together and it could have caused that, right? That the plant to explode. That's we're gonna we're gonna be one mistake, even if it was negligence, even if it wasn't willful, that would justify uh, summary discharge. So those are some categories. They're all related to work, right? They're all going to be related to misconduct at work, because that's what those two clauses, at least in the code, are getting at, right? How it, that, it's always about work conduct. Is it bad enough to justify termination or or not? Uh, or does it justify some sort of warning? Because the principle of American just cause labor laws, at least, is that the punishment for the employee is supposed to be proportional to the misconduct, right? And there is another principle that says it's not supposed to be punitive, right? The, the, the read the, the, what the employer does to the employee is not just supposed to be punished, but it's supposed to be corrected, right? To correct the misconduct to get the employee to uh, get to get better at their job. So other objective reasons, sort of the one strike you're out rules. Um, generally speaking, under that clause, it's under American labor law, American employment law classified as the, any other objective reasons under the new code or the proposed code, they're going to have to be behaviors that are going to be necessarily outside of work, right? Because G and H cover activities that are inside work, right? Right, does that make sense? So it's got to be something different than G and H, right? It has to be something different than serious misconduct at work or just negligence at work. It's always usually going to be, for that category, something outside of the workplace, right? Something that the employee has done on his or her own time outside that the employer says that is enough that it affects me in a certain enough way that I'm going to take some action, terminate, or discharge, or, 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 or discipline in some way, right? And so in that sense, we say that but even though it's outside, it has to be connected in some way to the employer's, employee's ability to do the job, or to the employer's general business reputation, right? And so a couple of examples of that. So outside criminal acts, right? If you if you're a good employee at work, but you're and you're also a very good criminal after work, right? You don't do any crimes actually at work, but you're outside doing crimes. That can, under this idea of any other uh, objective reason, justify termination. But it has to be connected to work. And so the CSX Hotels case is a good example of that. There, the employee was a maintenance individual at a hotel, and he had access to guest rooms, right? He had a master key, and could, and, and could get into a room to fix an air conditioner or fix the light. Didn't steal anything at the hotel, but there was a gas station down the road that had some tires outside, I guess, and decided to help himself to four of those. Ryan was caught, uh, and everyone knew it in town that he had stolen these tires, and the, the employer said, I can't have you work here because you have access to individual hotel rooms, that will ruin our reputation, your honesty, your, you're not stealing things in general is important to you performing this job. And so it justified termination. If he was not working, I, I imagine if he was a groundskeeper, right, if he was just there to mow the grass and did not have access to employee rooms, the outcome would be very different because there the theft, the criminal act, is not related to what it is that the employee is doing. Right? And so I imagine if the employer, if CSX Hotels had discharged the groundskeeper, the result would have been you no know, just cause, bring the employee back, because it's not connected. Um, the easy cases are sort of, you know, uh, the bus driver in Phoenix Transit who was convicted for off-duty driving under the influence of alcohol. Well, you know, being a bus driver and you know, safely operating a vehicle is certainly uh, related to the job, so that person there was to, uh, uh, was just cause for that. Other off-duty misconduct, short of criminal activity, um, usually, um, although at least the St. Scholastica case deals with a little bit of criminal misconduct. Um, again, a clear relationship between the conduct and the employer's legitimate business interest. So if you're a telephone company and you have an individual making harassing telephone calls while off-duty to people, uh, you know, that seems to be connected to work, right? Can't have people work for us that, that do that, that misuse our own telephone system to place uh, heavy breathing phone calls to their, to their neighbors, we're not going to allow that to happen. Um, an individual used Facebook. Did they, you, I, I could, I, I would not be able to fit into this room probably the number of American employment law cases that deal with somehow an employee doing something on Facebook, 
that got me fired. It is the nouveau thing for people to do because everyone's on Facebook constantly all the time. They take pictures, they put it on Facebook. They're saying things about their employer or their supervisors or their colleagues. You'd be amazed at what I'm, I'm sure our students do it too. But I, I, that's why I'm not looking at their Facebook pages. And I don't let them look at mine. Um, and so this was a case where the, uh, an, an employee of an airline made threats to their uh, scheduling supervisors that I'm going to get them because they keep on giving me the bad shifts on Facebook. Not criminal, not at work, right? Outside work, but that's connected to the job, right? That's outside of misconduct. Any other objective reason that warrants its summary discharge. The college, this is the College of Saints Scholastica case is essentially like the CSX Hotel case. Although I don't think the person who was actually convicted of the crime, but was alleged to have engaged in some criminal sexual misconduct. He worked at a college, an all-women's college, and he was a maintenance supervisor and had access to dorm rooms. And obviously the arbitrator said there, there's no obligation for the employer to wait and see for something bad to happen. We're going to allow them to go ahead and make a discharge now based upon the outside uh, work. But you're, you're seeing these are fairly limited, fairly narrow circumstances that the employer is being held to proving. Again, very different from what you have now under current law. Uh, disloyalty will get you discharged right away. Stokes uh, versus Dole Nutt involved an employee under an individual employment contract who decided while he was working for Dole Nutt, he was going to begin to collect documents from Dole Nutt about customers and processes so he could open up his own competing nut company. It's hard to work with old nut and also start setting up your own competing company. We call that divided loyalty. You owe a duty of loyalty to your employer. That will warrant summary discharge, any other objective reason. Lying on an employment application is a big one. Uh, to the extent that there are written employment applications, where if employees make uh, misstatements on that and the employer later finds out about it, that will usually warrant um, discharge. We'll leave it at that. It's a little more complicated in American law, depending on when you found out. Um, the Vermont state case, the, the person on their resume claimed to be a president of another company during a period when he was actually in prison for uh, some crime. So he, he lied, and then he also failed to disclose the fact that he was, he was a criminal, and when the employer found out, they got fired. So again, I think the, the, the takeaway from that whole little, those some examples of categories, very narrow situations that can justify immediate employer action under a just cause regime. Right? Much, much less discretion for the employer than under employment at will under the current Georgia code. Under the current code, all you have to do is pay a month's severance, right? And then that's it. No reasons, but this is very, very different. Again, no value judgment on whether one system is better than the other. It's just very different for employers. If the extent when the, when the, where the code goes in, there will be a lots of work for Georgia lawyers who practice in employment law to train your clients, to train employers how it is that they need to begin to deal with their employees so they do not violate the law. What things do they need to collect? What do they need to say? What can't they say? Right? So they, they don't run about of the law. Is it worth talking about the restraints of competition or not? I don't know. I think it's open. Let's open the floor for questions. That sounds great. That's a good place to stop.